This conference will now be recorded. Please. I just want to introduce, I don't know if everybody knows Tisha. She's a new paralegal and um, I'm going nice to meet drive today. So uh, okay, great. I'll the roll call. Councilor Heldenbrand? Present. Councilor Arnold? Present. Councilor Oropesa? Here. Councilor Korn? Here, physically, not sure about the minute. Chair, you have I a will not comment on that. <laughs> oh, come on. That could take hours. <laughs> uh, next item is the Agenda. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Council I'd like Moore. to remove items four and seven from the agenda. I understand the procurement issue is still pending on item four. Item seven, the main sponsor is not available. I'll second. Okay, so I have a motion and a second okay. to remove items four and item seven of the regular items for this meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 There being no opposition, so moved. First, I, the, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the legal committee meeting on Thursday, November 17th, 2022. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the legal committee meeting on Thursday, November 17th, 2022. Second. There being a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, same. There being none, so approved. First item on the agenda, regular item, is ordinance 23XX, and we get to fill those in after we pass them. So everything's always an XX. An ordinance amending chapter 22 of the Roswell City Code regarding the construction and maintenance of sidewalks. Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Uh, at the request of Councilor Arnold, a member of this committee, uh, we've discussed and I present some amendment, uh, just a simple amendment to Chapter 22 of the Code, 22-15 uh, in particular. Currently, the Code provides, uh, next slide. So currently, the Code provides that the abutting owner shall be responsible for the uh, they were fully responsible for construction, maintenance, pretty much everything regarding sidewalks. As it's written, it's, it doesn't entirely comply, in my view, with state law. In this ordinance, I pulled up the history, and from what I saw, it was put in because people were removing uh, sidewalks in front of their house, and the city wanted to make a point that it's yours to keep, take care of. So with that in mind, I've drafted an amendment so that we're compliant with the procedure provided for in the state code. Uh, this is particularly important in light of the ninth in the of the civil rights act that was passed a year uh, last year at the state house. It provides in particular that a failure to provide due process is something that we could be sued for, and if we're sued and lose, we have to pay attorney's fees. So if we want to force somebody to repair the sidewalk they've destroyed, we need to go through the process, and so that's pretty much what this amendment is saying. And also, by taking out the shall, if the city for some reason equitably believes that the sidewalk should be paid by the public, we can do that too. So, um, if there's somebody on fixed income who simply cannot do it and it's you know a, a judgment-proof person, the city can go in and help them out, for example, without violating its own ordinance. Okay. So what you're doing is you're just from the original ordinance. Is this what the original ordinance was, and you yes. redlined it? Yeah, redlined so the. All you're taking out. You're adding be the through the pro this is uh, on line 20 for those that are reading along you're adding b through the construction of sidewalks shall require issuance of a building permit from the city maintenance repairs and reconstruction of all sidewalks shall be through the process described and it pertains to the code the state code correct that's right or as provided in the subdivision code and then you're striking be the responsibility of owner of property which abuts such sidewalks. Property owners shall be responsible for replacement of any removed sidewalk within 30 days of removal 
with the exception of removal of sidewalk done by a government agent. You're striking that. And that's Correct. the point yeah. that's being made here. That's it. Yeah, that second sentence, property owner shall be responsible. We don't have the legal authority to do that by ordinance. Yeah. At, le at least by 3-49-4. Mr. Mavers, do you have any comments on this? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't seen the, I haven't read that document uh, fully. My first thought was uh, with respect to replacing the sidewalks, uh, generally around town, we have a shortage of sidewalks. So 90% right. 90 of the cases, it's probably not gonna be an issue. But in some cases where we would have a sidewalk that had to be pulled out, in order to make the way for new development. In other words, you pull out the curb, you pull out the gutter, you pull out the sidewalk in order to do a driveway approach. Things like that. Is this going to in any way inhibit our ability to require uh, the replacement of that sidewalk and part of that driveway approach as part of our building permit process? Nope. Uh, that's, is, so it's within, so if we're doing repairs of existing sidewalk, 349, 3-4, 349-4, or is provided in the code. So if it's otherwise in the Roswell code, you, so the subdivision code requiring sidewalks would be the, the main example of that. Right. Yeah, so if, if yeah, yeah. Yeah, and sorry, I should have pulled it up. I started, but 349.4 simply says, if you're going to require the abutting landowner to create, fix, or, or recreate, if they've taken it out, you issue a resolution, they have time to appeal that resolution to the governing body. If they don't, they have to do it within 20 days or we can get a court order for them to do it. And in the meantime, any liability for the broken sidewalk falls on the landowner. So it, it takes, you know, if somebody takes a spill on the sidewalk now, it's not on us. Okay. What if, let me just ask you this side, because we've had conversation in this committee, if I recall this committee, or was one of the two, might have been public safety about construction of sidewalks. I remember there was a lady that the city had told her that she needed to put a sidewalk in at her develop at her developed piece of property. And I believe we were going to look into whether there was some additional federal assistance or state assistance. Where are we in that process? We are uh not to get away from this, but this is. There's two things, and, and I have another follow-up question for, for Hess, because the, the subdivision code is where a lot of this is coming from. So do we need to go back and amend the subdivision code as well? Because I've got two or three different little amendments we could not possibly do all at the same time. No, so this does, this says the subdiv anything in the subdivision code goes. So this is so this doesn't include construction. This is maintenance, repairs, and reconstruction. Okay. So getting back to your question here, uh, uh, particularly some of the older areas of town where we have corner lots, it becomes quite a burden to install a sidewalk all the way around. We are looking, and as a matter of fact, I have been in touch with the uh, the coordinator for the statewide safe routes to school program, right. where we have the ability to tap into grants and other funding for sidewalks uh, and other things. But we're also looking at a number of, of other uh, low to moderate income housing programs, some other kind of federal assistance and other things. I'm working with Councilor Arno pretty regularly to develop a list of resources that we can tap into that will uh, either defray the costs of putting in new sidewalks or possibly create a scenario where the city will get a grant and we'll be able to do from say uh, the Chihuahuita area. Uh, last time I was over there, there are no north-south sidewalks all the way over to, I think it's McGaffey, which is where the mm -hmm. school was located. They, right. uh, yeah, they, there's sidewalks in on McGaffey, but getting from actually the Chihuahua area down to McGaffey, there's nothing. So we could go and put together an entire, become part of the Safe Routes to School program, find the funding and be able to put in a whole series of sidewalks that will help a lot of these people out. Now, how we deal with the, subdivision code right now, which is where the concern is coming from. In our subdivision code, it is it states pretty succinctly that if you build a new home and there's no sidewalk in, you must construct the sidewalk around the perimeter. And it's there's no uh, there's no out clause. There's no way to get out of that right now, which is why I was thinking we need to we need to take a look at the subdivision code and how the subdivision code impacts this because I, I do believe there should be some flexibility 
especially in our um, older areas of town, our lower cost areas of town. Yeah, especially when it's an infill project or something. There may be a sidewalk there that, that how, how we handle and help those yeah. people with those infills. And corner, corner lots are, are particularly problematic because if we put in new sidewalks at the corner, we also have to put in ADA ramps and other things. Uh, and I know the city engineer has a program for installing ADA sidewalks, I, uh, ADA sales, uh, ramps and other things, but it's a, uh, we need to take it one step further, I think, in our yeah. uh, older infill areas of town so that we are in compliance with ADA, so that we get these sidewalks built, so the children have do have a safe pathway to schools and other areas. It's a, it's a uh, it's an ongoing concern that Council Arnold has taken the lead on a lot of it. We're working together to figure it all out. When could we then expect to see some presentation about that so that we can move this forward? Sounds like it's going to be a combination between you and Lewis, or just Most likely, yes. and, and how we can then also. I understand we got a grant writer coming back, and so. How soon could we look at or expect to see something reasonable? Mr. Chairman, I think the, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I looked at it, that when we're doing resurfacing and it's a state road street part of their system, um, it's a requirement that they have signed. Okay? Yeah. And so I don't, what you're talking about is in addition to because we're talking about city yes. solely owned streets. Right. And it probably should have come out of the infrastructure committee, but I don't see it coming out of there. Or is it to come out of there? Well, I don't know if it is or not, but I wasn't going to address the infrastructure. But I was going to address is the, the fact that we are now going to get a new school on Alameda, East Alameda. Yep. And I wonder if we can work with the school system because a lot of a lot of Alameda in that area doesn't have sidewalks, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons that uh, Bland got sidewalks because of Nancy Lopez School and and, and Mesa. But now that they're moving uh, Nancy Lopez to Alameda, obviously the kids are going to be in the same situation that they were before. Yeah. Before we build the sidewalk with on bland. Has the new school received its funding yet? I'm not sure. I, I think they just purchased the uh, the uh, land. In longer term, Mr. Chairman, a number of other municipalities do just build in a you can make a sidewalk assessment. And so they build in, you know, a pretty small assessment onto the property tax. Right. And it comes with a, and typically you have to, when you do that, you have to make a specific plan about how sidewalks will be created or improved upon throughout the city in an orderly fashion. But you know, nobody likes to raise taxes, but that is an option. Mr. Chairman. And Councilman, to answer your uh, question directly, uh, I don't see any reason why we can't pull something together by the February meeting. I think it's fine, and, you know, and again, I don't want to overstep the infrastructure committee's boundaries, but I don't know if it's being discussed there or not. But I'm not on that committee. I don't go there. Uh, I don't know. The school location, is it in the city or is it it's real close to the line? It's in the city. It's in the city. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would just actually like to say one of the things that, uh, you know, I've been listening to the issue regarding sidewalks. Um, probably since I think it was 2018 when um, Councillor Stubbs actually presented it. And I was highly concerned because a lot of the constituents in my ward have either no sidewalks or trees that have taken up, you know, and, and messed up their sidewalks. And they were highly concerned at how they were going to afford it. Um, so t for me, there's so many different aspects to to addressing this issue, considering that we're wanting to do infill. So we do need to actually look at that. I totally support possibly tabling this until we can actually make the amendments and then just do it all in one fell swoop. But I have actually been working with Hess and um, 
Kevin, and I think we've had discussions on getting grant writers, a pool of grant writers to kind of get in and kind of help this. I, I do think that uh, if we can make the changes to the ordinance and um, then create like a 10 year plan on areas to address, you know, and, and, and create some kind of goal of how, what we're gonna spend each year or what kind of grant money we need to pull in each year and just hit area by area or as the projects come. But um, so, you know, uh, Councilman Orpesa has um, taken the time to kind of take me around the east side and Chihuahuita and I'm sorry, but there are no sidewalks and they are taxpayers. We need to be contributing back to them. Um, we need to be making sure they do have a safe route home and make sure that they have sidewalks to get them out of the middle of the street. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm for pausing this to add additional language, but uh, I just really want to see some movement on this. Yes, Mr. Chairman, my question to this is that this just primarily brings us in to alignment with state statutes. That's what we're doing here, but I got off on a tangent. Well, and, and, and I think that all this other stuff's important. But I think if you're talking about holding this one up, let's run. No, we're not. I'm not talking about holding this one up. I just said I'm okay with it. I don't think anyone's talking about holding okay. this one up. Well, I misunderstood. I apologize. I think, well, what it took down to a trail was, was when we talked about yeah, so I want to talk months, to ago, months ago about okay. sidewalk issues and it hasn't advanced. Yeah. It's just. Sidewalks have been an issue as long as I can remember. I know, but. but the council has not done a thing. We've talked about them and, and nothing takes place, council. Uh, Mike, please correct me if I'm wrong, yes, but at, at, at one point, uh, especially when Steve Policy was hired, I think there was discussion that we were going to set aside $50,000 for specifically for sidewalks. I, I'm not sure whether that ever happened or not, but it seems like the last couple of years, the the sidewalks have been mixed mixed in with the uh, road. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that $50,000 that was supposed to be set aside for sidewalks on a yearly basis kind of went by the wayside. And uh, I don't know whether the $50,000 got in, got in with the road fund or not, you know. No, you're correct. I don't remember if it was uh, fifty thousand. I was thinking it was more than that. I think so. It, it may be fifty. Uh, but yeah, that was to be used separate from the road projects yeah. because he builds those in automatically to his road projects, and that's part of that project. These were for the incidental repairs of sidewalks right. around town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we got so much sidewalk work to be and we could put our own put our own crew on and not contract that out. We could keep somebody. We actually looked at that at one. We time. could have somebody working on side a crew working on sidewalks in this city for perpetuity. I love it. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> I know when I was out, I've got some areas of my ward where, honest to goodness, the sidewalk uh -huh. goes like this. It's a it's a hazard. We, we can uh, we can. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes straight like this. Yeah. Oh, I'll update money. those numbers, but we we did pull that program together, the number of people and the cost for yeah. that. So it's going to be up to Mr. Mavers to go find some grand money to get up the federal the government pay for all of us. <laughs> the, the, and again, sir, we apologize for not bringing it back to you, but we have been working on this. We have identified, in fact, we've had two meetings, um, two meetings recently, specifically about Alameda between between Garden and Atkinson. That is a significant traffic problem. It is a very narrow, the pavement there, very narrow, running through that older neighborhood. They have no sidewalks, they have no curb ramps, they desperately need traffic calming measures and they need mid-block stops and other things as well. So it's a, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff all mixed in here that we need to do to beyond sidewalks to create a more walkable, livable environment, especially on the east side of town. Yep. I would be curious, Mr. Chairman, when we get down this, much further down this road, to see if we've actually got easement left in some of these areas. We've got what? 
easement. Oh, yeah. And these are that's going to have to be addressed as well. There might not be any easement. So if there's not any easement, then it's not a problem. You're you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. That's an easy thing to check. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. So I would advise Mr. Mavers to see if we got easement. Some of these, like Alameda, probably do. Some of the other streets some adjacent to this may not. Yeah, there's a there's some of those other streets, especially in the Chihuahua region. Quite honestly, the best thing may be able to happen to some of those is making one way, one way narrow them down and uh, create a circulation element of uh, you know, north and south, that would every other street would be one way in the opposite direction. Because those streets are the at best 20 feet curb to curb. 20? If, if, if there's even curb. We, we, have, we used to have a lot of one way streets in this town. I liked it, but somebody yeah. smarter than me figured out. We didn't okay, well, we can expect to hear something hopefully by February, February. and then bring it forth and and uh, you may bring it back to this committee and if we will push it to infrastructure uh, if we feel that where it needs to go so okay any other now, do i have a motion I got a motion i got a motion did i get a second i didn't I don't, she didn't make a motion i'll make a motion mr chair i'd like to make a motion to um move to full council ordinance 23 um dash Double X, an ordinance amending chapter 22 of the Roswell City Code regarding the construction and maintenance of sidewalks. Second. And I have a motion and I have a second. Okay, Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being none, so motion passes. Next item on the agenda is a Resolution of support for Roswell Plain Solar LLC North America to, to collaborate in a community benefit partnership program. Mr. Mavers, please. Hey. Mr. Chairman, welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you and uh, committee members. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, this resolution is virtually identical to the resolution that was presented last month and the resolution that was passed by the city council at the latest city council meeting. This uh, community benefit partnership programs, they are being put forward by our community solar organizations. This project in, is uh, being put forward by Roswell Plain Solar, LLC. They are hoping to build a community solar array at the far west end of town, immediately adjacent to the relief route of Thout Alameda down there. That was passed by the Planning and Zoning Commission a month or so ago. But we'd like you to, of course, of course, consider and recommend to the City Council approval and adoption of this particular resolution, which authorizes Roswell Plains Solar to establish a community benefit program for residents and nonprofit organizations. I really like this program because what we're doing, in addition, we're going beyond just reducing people's energy costs by a little bit. We're also going ahead and funding some of our nonprofits, our community nonprofits. So next slide. <laughs> And the, uh, again, we're establishing a community benefit program for Roswell residents who participate in and subscribe to okay, the program provided by Roswell Plains. The beneficiaries of the program, our nonprofits, will be selected from a list of Roswell based community service organizations and nonprofits. So, assuming they get funded and they start constructing, they will come back to us, they'll work directly with us. We will develop this list of local nonprofits. Again, the community-based nonprofits, not any of the big national organizations, our local people here getting the benefit of local people doing a good, doing the right thing here locally. So next slide. As part of the program, uh, Roswell Plains will donate $100 per subscriber uh, to the city of Roswell designated public services. Subscribers will be able to select from a list, again, of city-owned organizations. What is not on that slide, what is missing, is that the Community-based organization gets the total number of donations, the largest, they get a $5,000 bump at the end of the year as well. So it's, uh, there's, a, there's some potentially some significant dollars here for our nonprofits. Okay. Yeah, so again, we'd ask you to go ahead and review the resolution and recommend the council approval of this uh, to establish a community benefit program uh, as presented. And uh, of course, today is the first time this is being considered for this one. Any questions? Councillor Corn. 
No question, Mr. Chairman, I move that we send uh, the full council resolution supported by the city of Roswell uh, with Roswell Plain Solar LLC to collaborate the community benefit partnership program. I looked through this stuff. I think it's a great idea. It may be a hiccup down the road, but we'll fix it if we need to. Okay. Give a second. A dis discussion item. There's no guarantee that this project is going to get done. No, no, I understand. There's like there's I don't know, how many of them we're seeing. Last, last. I heard, how many do we have them around in this community? Well, they're going last for? I heard, there's four to five times as many participants. I think you got a one in ten chance as to get a, these a, things. Yeah, maybe one in five to one in ten chance. Yeah. So this. But just putting together these kind of programs and the resolution of support, though, does yeah. increase the chances of them getting I just want money. people to understand, don't get your hopes well, built up. Yeah. Uh, this. this also got some potential problem with the PRC or whatever the new group oh, is. Yeah. Called well, too. There are so, so many people out there that are this, trying to put this, these community solar projects together that who knows where it's going to end up. I like this one because yeah. there's some potential payback to our nonprofits. Oh, that. I think it's a great idea. Maybe that separates them from the others that are in the pile that are going to get approved. So, yeah. so hopefully that'll work and it's a great idea for them. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, Councilor Orpesa? No, sir. Come on, give me something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor signify Wait, by saying aye. Who was the second? I'm sorry, you oh. missed it. You were? Okay. But, she didn't really second it, so I like it. <laughs> Buzzing Council wore Pace's term because he seconded the last one. <laughs> Thank Come on, you've got to stay with it here. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same, there being none. Motion so moved. Item four was removed. Now we are on to item five, which is the city treasurer finance officer. Uh, We're on item three. three. Oh, three. I want to. Oh, I Oops, bring the turtle. I'm sorry. I can't wait to see what you brought. Maybe it was a Freudian I move. I don't know. Maybe it was a Freudian <laughs> mistake here. I don't know. Well, item three, which is the ordinance I, pursuant I, I to the it's Time to get you some new glasses, Mr. I do Jones. need some new ones. I know. <laughs> Pursuant to the NMSA 1978 section 1-22-3.1 to opt in for the election of municipal officers of the city of Roswell in the next local election. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is my deal. I'll let a learned <clears throat> lawyer talk if I miss a high point. Um, but basically what this <laughs> does is it takes our March, election, March city elections it moves it to the November before. So the bad news is that every one of us that are elected is going to lose 90 days of, of on the end of our term. That's the bad news. The good news is that it saves the city of Roswell. I'm estimating, I, I heard that we spent 82,000. I didn't go verify that for the last for the last citywide election. So we're going to save that next time with everything else going up. I'm sure it's going to be 100,000 plus. We have to rent all the stuff, the machines and stuff from the county. Um, we have to use the county to go get our, our registration documents to prove that you live in your ward, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it saves us money. We would share on election day in November of odd numbered years. Um, with uh, the, whatever wards in the school that's running, any of the um, community college folks that are up for election, um, soil, um, soil conservation group also has to be elected. Yeah, any special district. And, and special districts. About the only thing that won't be on here with this is the Roswell Pecos Valley, and somehow they got left out of the code for some reason. Yeah. Uh, that's not our fault. That's those guys and gals who live up way north of here, Mr. Chairman. So that's that's it in a nutshell. All the other, it's my understanding, I talked to this county clerk, I talked to our city clerk, um, I talked to the county clerk and said, well, yeah, I'll just do it. And I said, how does this change anything else from her perspective about filing days and stuff? And what happens is we just, 
we, we don't change any of that stuff. The city code just falls in. We still file with the, with, with the city clerk. Yeah, and the timelines are all the same. The only thing that changes is the election is going to be in November instead of March, and you take the oath of office in January instead of the 1st of April. The other good news, and for you and I, Mr. Chairman, if we'd had an extra 90 days to look at this budget situation before we got there, it would have been very, very beneficial to us. At least it would have been to me. I agree with that because when you come in in such a short period of time and the budget's got to be approved, you've got new counselors, possible new counselors, five, because that's a cycle that don't have any background history, trying to digest things, and you're on the run. Well, you so go. you'll be more effective uh, in, in uh, helping with the budget process. I don't disagree with you, Counselor. Well, I, and, and I mean, the hardest part for me, uh, <clears throat> whenever we started in finance committee, was closing the book, closing the 22 bucks. Yeah. We didn't have a clue. We didn't have a chance to look at that. We had to close those, and then we had to have a a, a, a budget put together, a preliminary budget, and we were on short deadline because it had to go to DFA, and then they had to okie doke it and bring it back, right. and then we had to do a final that had to go back up there and get approved again with their okie dokie, and it just it it was just I found it very difficult, um, and. I had some sleepless nights, I'll admit it, because I take that my charge very seriously. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, and I'll yield to Mr. Mr. Hess. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the only thing I would add is if you really, uh, <laughs> we put in the, when we're acting, it, we subtracted 90 days instead of adding 270, which is another option. Uh, Councilor Corn felt that that was too self serving by appearance, even for a politician. Um, it, and the, yeah, I spoke with finance and I spoke with the office of the clerk and it looks like it probably save us 75 to 100 K is, is finance's estimate to move over. Uh, and then finally, a couple of counselors had asked, would this loop us with anything partisan? It would not. All elections are nonpartisan and the city code would still govern campaign finance uh, mechanisms. We don't report to Santa Fe unless we feel like it. Uh, Los Alamos, I think, is the only city council that files with the Secretary of State. Uh, I don't see that. Yeah. So we're going to do it. Yeah. So it will be Roswell's decision about how to make campaign reporting occur. Um, candidates file in August, just to let you guys know. And then uh, if you go to the next slide, we're definitely the odd man out at this point. Um, almost all the major municipalities have opted into this. The municipalities here in Chavez County, a real hangerman's there's part of it. So, uh, and then I'd say, you know, kind of not trying to take a political stance, but from legal's perspective, I absolutely love the idea of not having to issue an opinion about any of you guys and possible election stuff. I think it allows me to represent you better. And I remember that it kind of did become an issue in the last cycle. And I think it allows the city to just look better ethically if and also you know just partly because i know her personally the county clerk is great you know and not that amalia wouldn't be great at the election but that cindy does elections mm -hmm. she knows them and that they just any hiccups that we could have by by mistake then we throw on her sorry cindy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you saw that. Uh, <clears throat> you happen to be online she yeah is. she's online so yeah well any Councilor Orpesa. We've been talking about her. Let's see if she's got any. Well, let's let Councilor Orpesa. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, the, the only concern that I have, and I don't know whether it's a concern or not, because I, I haven't talked to, to Cindy Fuller about it, is if we go this route, are we going to lose the ability of determining the sites for the city of Roswell? Election sites? Yeah, I actually uh, no. Okay. We can actually request sites under the local election act. Okay, 
request but not guaranteed um, because we allow people I, yeah and i know we allow people to city election to come here and vote but, but, correct but that's a fair question yes, because i don't think i think because the requirements for because i dealt with this when i was a county commissioner they have to be ada compliant they have to have internet connection so that the the computer that actually prints the ballot can talk to the actually that talks to the secretary of state um, to make sure that robert corn is the right robert corn that lives at this address and that da, 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 da. um i don't know this far can you answer that question but i think probably 90 percent of the polling places are the same the, the only one that i can think of uh, Councillor is that the city, for whatever reason, always seems to want to have something at the at the uh, college. Well, the the reason is that uh, if I remember correctly, one of the reasons was we were trying to put sites in each individual ward, as opposed to one ward not having one or or whatever the case may be. Well, I. I I mean, Boys and Girls Club would be in use, the Church of Christ. I'm just off the top of my head. Um, I know uh, Eastern was selected because of Ward 4. Yeah. To, to make sure that there was one on the south side. Well, let's, let, let, Ms. Fuller, if you would care to respond. Are you there? I am. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. So, um, so I think the question is, would you have a say in polling locations, correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm always happy. The county, the county commissioners are the ones who will actually um, approve the polling places for the elections, um, including the local election. We will do that in June or July of 2023, and I am more than happy to take suggest suggestions to them um, because we would love to have the city of Roswell opt in and be a part of our local, our regular local election. Um, you know, I was telling um, Councillor Corn when we spoke about this that uh, we currently have. 12 polling locations set up and we've used those for quite some time now for several elections and i think that benefits the voters because they are getting used to these locations um, and it helps them to know where they can go vote but if there is a location that is different than what we are using i am more than happy to have that discussion and take that before the commissioners and, and I think my concern is not, uh, I don't have a concern with with uh, Ms. Fuller, but it's the future as to whether whether the, the county or the new uh, county clerk or, or even the commission for that matter would be willing to work with the city as far as those sites are concerned, that they would take it and gerrymander for a lack of a better word, uh, sites that would benefit certain uh, individuals? I agree with what you're saying in that if we could make sure that we at least had one polling place per ward, mm -hmm. because if I you know, live in Ward 4 and I don't have any place, I've got to come somewhere else, then what, have we disenfranchised any voters? Well, the, the idea that that you I asked that also legal counsel have we disenfranchised anyone? I'd have to look at the applicable state law. I can't give you that off the top of my head, but it, 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 I, uh, Madam Clerk, do you present the list to the commissioners? So we we meet with them. Uh, we will probably meet with them ask to in March, and then we do. Um, we kind of agree and then we present what we would like to see them um, use, but the ultimate decision is up to the commission. But, you know, I, I've never seen them change what's been recommended by the clerk staff. Um, I, I can tell you, you know, as long as I'm here, I'm more than happy to work with the city. 
and I know that the commission that we have and um, currently and the new commissioner we have coming in, they're going to be more than willing to work. Um, I hear your concerns, Councillor Oropesa, but um, I would hope that no clerk would um, pick polling locations that would disenfranchise voters. Okay. Ms. Fuller? Yes. Do you know if there are currently your last election that you have polling places in every ward in the city of Roswell? Uh, we had, let me look while I have you on here. I think I can figure that out without sure. too much work. Sure. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, while she's looking that up, I'll bet you you'll find out that the answer to your question is yes. There is maybe two that I can think of that are across the street in the county. I think Church on the Move may be in the county, but oh, it's city. It's in the city. Well, then I stand by. I'll just shut up. I think there is one safe for that presently. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, magistrate district city council. Boy, y'all put me on the spot here. Um, oh, you can handle it. Um, let me see. Okay, so yeah. so the mall. The mall would be in Ward Two. Ward yeah. Two. And the let's see. So then we have Fishing Game is Ward Three. Be church on Country Club. That's Ward Two. Okay. And then we have West Country Club. Church of Christ is going to be three. 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 I think that's in three. Yeah. Yeah, that would be three, I think. Okay. And the Boys and Girls Club would be in Ward One. Ward One. Ward one. Uh, the clerk's office would be in Ward Four. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's way down. Yeah. Four right right across the street from five. I mean that for that. Yeah, it's it's actually not in four. It's across the street, across yeah. Main Street, because Main Street is that where the break is, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so it's just across the, literally across the street. So yeah. you could count it, both of them, as far as I'm concerned. And then right. church, on, church on the Move would be in church five. Yes. Mm -hmm. four. Maybe four. Four. That's four. That's four. Church on the Move is in four. Who's in five? We haven't got five covered yet. Anyway. We've got Boys and Girls Club and the no, no. Boys and Girls Club is one. Is one. Do we have Waymaker? Okay. Uh, uh, no, we have the uh, New Mexico Game and Fish. Three. 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 Yeah, okay. So we do, do not do? have one in five. What do you have on the south side? South side of Roswell. We have the clerk's office and church on the move. In five at all? No, no, no. So no, I'm looking at five right now. That would probably be the college. Would yeah, be college will be, be five. Yeah, Patty. Less than a dozen people vote. I don't care. I could, and there were like twenty something people that voted at the college. Yeah, yeah. but well, but they still should be able to work. The the county the county offices are in five, I think. I don't remember which Main Street it goes down there, but well, it's got to go down um, south west. Give the word, ma'am. Uh, because Mary Foster's in Precinct 91, and it's just on the west side of the um, of Main Street there, and runs across and down Main Street to the base and picks up the base. So I think got, that, wouldn't Church on the Move be in Ward 5 along Brasher there? Hey, let's see, that division is on Union, so depending on which side of Union it's on. Um, yeah, I would, I'm, I'm going to say they are in Ward 5. I think that's... Pull it up here real quick. 
You're looking for. Oh, look at those handsome people. <laughs> Where's the map? Hey. It's up there, right there. There we go. Church on the move. Church on the move is. It's in five. And the county offices is in five, across the street from four. And then Waymakers. Yep. And Waymakers in four on Sunday. It's, it's real close. It's right on the line. Uh, Waymaker is in four. Yep. It's, yep. So it's, it's three by it's one. So you're right, right at the Y. The offices here. It's in five. It's, it's really. For all practical purposes, it it's it's the yeah, intersection of one. Gaffy there, Bob. And that's Wildy right there. Right. So it's uh, but that's what I'm saying. It's within two blocks of one. Because uh, it's McGaffey, definitely in five, but we do have something in one of ribs. Every ward is covered. Yep. Every ward does have a full position. Very Center for the city are different. How many of them are different than the one that the that you use for the general election? Besides um, the the college, I think it's the only one I can recall. Because we don't care about Dexter Hageman or like Arthur either. Right, or East Grand Plains. No, we, we try to use the same locations for both the primary, general, and the regular local. Okay. There you go. I think we should be fine then. We haven't we haven't disenfranchised someone by position by not having a polling position in every ward. So well and, and of course they're all convenient centers. You can vote they can vote forever. So, but the, the fact is that some people are, are so used to going to their wards and, and voting their wards as opposed to just going in someplace else. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, comments of steel, in my opinion, Mr. Chairman. Well. Even if I give up 90 precious days, it's going to give me 90 days of time. It could go away. The time of DERA money. You all might be ready to get a, get rid of me before then, anyway. Well, let's not start those discussions. <laughs> it's not on the table. That's not what we're discussing here. Not an action item. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so, you know, I'm. I'll just say anytime we can save 75 to to $100,000, that's not a bad thing to do. No. Uh, and it's going to keep every year, you know, it's going to go up. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm a little more worried about not coordinating with the county commission as the, as the state legislature changing their mind and pulling the plug on the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do I have a motion? Well, it's my deal. You want me to make the motion? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, that we send ordinance, uh, this ordinance pursuant to NMSA 1978, Section 1 22 3.1 2018 to opt in for the election of municipal officers in the city of Roswell in the next regular local election. Second. Motion. Full. Yeah, full. Full, yes. Oh, I don't know. Let's try this one on consent. No. <laughs> no. <it> no. <laughs> you all in? No, sir. <laughs> See if anybody's awake. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. A motion by Councilor Corn, a second by Councilor Arnold. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. President, aye. Opposed, same. <laughs> there being none. So pass. <sighs> Item four. Now I go back to correct myself. Item four has been removed. 
Yes. Item five now is the city treasurer finance officer uh, employment contract. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, um, I know the mayor's not here, and Jeannie Davis is not here, and this is her contract, and it, I read it, and it looks almost word for word with the city attorney and and so, uh, uh, yes, so, uh, Mr. Chair, Ms. Uh, Councilor Korn, this is identical to Madam Clerk's contract minus the uh, salary provision. And uh, on page one, where the last two words are tw May 2023, that is errata and should be removed. But otherwise, this is the exact contract that has been approved. Can you say that again? The May 20 oh, sorry, uh, 2023? At the very bottom. Yeah, um, we, we hope she stays on. Um, between now and May, and doesn't. <laughs> I'm not sure how that got in there. It's a typo. It's a perfect. I, I had some questions on that one. That's going to be struck. Uh, it should say January 2023. Okay, so you'll make so that. This amendment. will be effective January 2023, is what you're saying. If the council approves it. If the council approves it. Right. Okay, so strike the word May and insert the word. January. January. Yes, sir. As under this contract. Okay, so I'll make that motion. Okay. A second. I'll, I'll second. That's his <laughs> turn. When you're sitting down there, I have to throw something at no, you. I'm keeping track here, kids. Well, okay. I said, I'll make that motion. I was like waiting for him to read did you, it. Did you want to send us to consent? Or? <laughs> no, no. no. I, I do have a question about the salary range and that falls inside it's, it's in the same grade that she's in okay yep. we're not moving any grades gotcha. mm -hmm. Council uh, question as far as the process is concerned uh because from what i understand right now mr fuentes is her immediate supervisor is, is that is that not true? That's not true. She's appointed. She's appointed. She works for the council. The okay, plan. but right now, without the contract, in my estimation, she's she was appointed by the council a uh, long time ago, several months ago. At that, that point, she became in May. She became an employee of the the council. Her contract just hasn't been done up till this point. The, the contract is a to conform with the attorney general's. It doesn't instill any new authority. Right. But let me see. The, the last time that I talked to her, she was under the impression, or at least I I understood that she was under the impression that Mr. Fuentes was still her immediate supervisor. Well, if you look at our structure, our, our organizational structure, none of that's been changed since any of these positions have put in. So all that's going to have to be reworked and, and changed because. Mr. Fuentes cannot be her supervisor. She works for the, the mayor and the council. He's appointed by them. I just want to make sure that that is understood. Well, and, and to your point there, which when we go to discussion items, that's where all, with, with the administrative code, that's where all this will really truly get sorted out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the way it is written now, every one of these positions, unless we do what with the appointment and contracts, everyone works for the city manager and so this removes that when we go and we'll have to, to make some changes in the administrative code to handle that because we're still operating on that 1914 is it or something to that effect that was put in place so that is where it will have to be adjusted yeah. council Pace, because Again, we haven't done a dang thing, even though structurally Mike is is saying we got to redo the organizational chart here and get that corrected. Well, the, the other question that I have is because for starting new date, I guess you could say, is January the 1st, 2023. When you talk about uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, severance pay. Is that going to be severance pay from that date, or or is it going to be May of 2022? No, no, it would be it'd be severance pay from the creation of the contracts. Okay, that would be the effective date that it starts. 
Yes. Or that would that would fall. The conditions of the contract. Would the, yeah, the end. conditions of the contract begin on January one. Or January second Thursday. Uh, January fifteenth ish. Whenever that if, if if that gets approved to council, that's when it would take a hold. Right. right. Would take well, actually, it's the council would be ratified. Right. It's, it's it's the the salary's been negotiated. Uh, as well as the documents. Right. Yeah. Like I said, this is really more of a conformity measure with the Attorney General's opinion than changing the substance of her position. Does that answer your question, Council yeah. Members? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I'm over here beating him. <laughs> so, has would it be the default? 911. Is that right? That's because that's they've agreed. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's my. That's how we did it with you and me. Yeah. I thought I made a motion. I'm not making no, a motion. No. Yeah. Here, we'll, we'll let Juan okay. make the motion. Did we get a motion? What? We already had a motion. Did we have the motion? Yes. Did we get the second? Yes. Juan. Okay, I'll sort of Okay. okay. So it's your turn next time. Uh, <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being none, motion so passes. Next item on the agenda is a resolution for the Open Meetings Act. Yeah. Counselor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you, uh, Counselors. Uh, state law requires that every year we pass an open meetings resolution. This is identical to the open meetings resolution passed for the past eight years at least. Um, it's sort of pro forma, but it, it, it's just uh, base level compliance with the Open Meetings Act. 72 hours for agenda, 10 days notice for meetings that aren't emergency or special meetings. Uh, special Emergency and special meetings are frowned upon. Um, emergency meetings, just as you know, have to be reported to Santa Fe. Special meetings take three days and six councils. That's all this does. So. That's, yeah. yep. Any other discussions? Council Order Pesa, would you care to make a motion? Uh, yes, sir. I, Mr. Chair, I move that we send to full council recommending adoption of a resolution pursuant to the New Mexico Open Meeting Act. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, you're all quick on this. Yeah. It was her turn. My turn. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. There being none, motion so passes. That is the last item uh, well, on our agenda. And now we will shall move into non-action items. And Todd, it says that you get to talk. Todd talk. Todd talk. Todd talk. Is that a new radio show? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was awesome. I love that. So yeah, I am uh, Mr. Chair, Councilor. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions that you all may have about um, city property. Um, mainly mainly what I deal with is all of our city property. Um, I've given you guys um, both reports. I've emailed them to you and you have a copy of the full report in your hand. Basically, um, what we have is we have 359 total city parcels. We have, um, then I break it down and categorize it into 96, parcels of land that are considered buildable. Um, what considers that buildable is the medium uh, square footage of a house that's built in Roswell, which is about 1,400 square feet is the average. So if, if you can put a 1,400 square foot house on a lot, then we consider it a buildable lot. Now, do we have parcels where you could put smaller tiny homes and things like that? Yes, we do. Um, we have what's known as 143 unusable parcels or lots. These are little triangle pieces, bits of right of way, landlocked parcels. Um, and, you know, we need to figure out what to do with those. You know, do we do we send notices out to, you know, the immediate properties surrounding them? Uh, see if anybody wants to pick it up and and acquire it so that they can do a lot consolidation and now they're you know paying another three or four dollars a year in taxes and they are uh you know responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of that some of it we can get rid of 
um, some of it is it's just going to be the city's responsibility, depending on what it is. Um, so I'm here to answer questions about property. And I know that uh, Council Arnold and I had visited a little bit when we were, uh, you know, doing all the canvassing and everything for the property out on Richardson. And so I'm here to answer your questions. Council Um Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, of all the properties that were on the list, mm -hmm. I think I asked you this a little earlier. Okay. Uh, how many of those are properties that the city has a lien on? That doesn't actually own, but just have okay. A lien. So I have 236 liens that are related to demolition. Um, Toby Franco and he is currently tracking all of the like weed weed liens that we have. He he deals mainly with those. I deal with the demolition liens. Um, we also have liens out there for utility uh, with the water. With the water department, I deal with I deal with some of those. Um, you know, mainly I'll get phone calls from uh, real estate folks or title companies going, "Hey, there's a, you know, there's an old lien on a piece of property for an unpaid water bill. If the property has changed ownerships two or three times, you know, we have no choice but to go ahead and release it so that they can so that they can have clean title on their property." Um, yeah. And um, but a lot you of never times, release a lien without without some. Well, a lot of times, a lot of times, if these liens are out of statute, enforceable mm -hmm. statute, okay, and they and then they're beyond the statute, then we have to Just we, have to, we have to release you're it. Out, we have a choice. You're out of statute. Okay. Now, um, I have been. I want to report that since I've started working with the city about two and a half years. Um, year to date recovered on liens is one hundred ninety eight thousand. Six hundred and three dollars and eighty-four cents. That's nice. So these are both. Uh, these are all different sorts of liens that I've had my hands in. Um, people call up and say, "Hey, I want a, 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 I've got a lien on this property. I bought it. What can I do?" Like certainly, you can pay it, or um, you know, all in one lump sum. I give them the option to do a payment arrangement. Um, I do have seven payment arrangements in place where people are sending monthly payments to pay off their liens, which is good. Um, I have one development agreement that we did on a piece of property where um, a fella, uh, there was a, a small lien on a piece of property that he bought. Um, it wasn't his responsibility to pay the lien. It was an older lien, but he agreed to do a development agreement with us in lieu of having to pay anything on, on that lien. So he is currently developing that property into a house. It's great because that gets <coughs> tax rolls, generates GRT, plug them back to <coughs> water sewer. It's good. So every time someone comes to my office and says, what, what does the city have as far as property? Well, I pull up the map with all of our 96 buildable lots. I show them, they go and they do some of their homework, figure out, you know, uh, they go and look at the site, maybe if they're unfamiliar with the area. Then they come back and go, "Well, what do I, what do I do? How can I, how can I get this?" And I say, basically, right now, all you have to do is show us some sort of site plan. Doesn't have to be anything formal. It's written like by an architect or anything yet. Do you go? I want to build this. This is my dream. I want to do this. But then maybe we have a lien on that property. Well, the old way, from what I understand, when I came into this position, the way that it was done is, well, if you're going to buy that property where we're wanting, you know, full market value plus the cost of the lien, and they immediately just like, no, I'll go buy the one next to it that I can pick up for a couple thousand bucks. So what we're what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do in property is is say, OK, we can't we can't give it away. Right. But let's say we get the property appraised and the buyer pays for the appraisal on the property if they're uh, if they're wanting to buy it. It appraises out so we have a fair market value. Then we can then we can look at what they're going to develop against that fair market value. And if they're gonna put a, a house on there and it's 
uh, it's going to be great, then we can do a development agreement with them and say we will we will sell you that property for two hundred dollars or whatever it is and waive the cost of the lien and have it all in the development agreement. And as long as that person does what they say they're going to do, it's theirs. Take it, please. We don't want it. Finish your project. God bless, right? Like we need housing. So if we've got somebody, we don't want the lien to be an encumbrance, we're going to make that money back up over the lifespan of that house instead of trying to collect it all up front, which was the way I understood it was being done before. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. So when he refers to development agreement, this is not a development agreement, is a term of art that lawyers would use. It's, it's a contract. A development agreement freezes zoning. It has all sorts of other things. But what, what we're saying here is the city is recognizing that well, let's use the, the church as an example Right. Uh, that we pulled because we didn't have the paperwork in place. But we have a $21,000 lien on a house across the street from a church. The church says we want to build on it but because they were willed that the owner died. So we're judgment proof. We have, we have nothing. The, the transfer is going to stop for three years on this property. Church says uh, we're, we want to put a garden in. Uh, city's position is the, you know, the garden's going to have statuary, religious statuary, so we don't want to. We're not touching that with a 10 foot pole. But they said, that we do also want to build a basketball court because we've got a bunch of community kids and there's one in the area. So we, so what we do, we go out, we get bids for how much it would cost to build a basketball court because we could foreclose the lien, force an option and take the land ourselves. Would, and the bid came out, just the materials for the court are more expensive than the lien. So what we do, we, we recognize that we can't collect the lien against the decedent. We're holding up development otherwise, so we accept something that's relative in value, a basketball court that's usable by the public for a set period of years right. in exchange for the lien. And then that I will, and the, the clerk ultimately has to be the sign, one who signs off on it as, as a matter of law, but legal is very happy to write an opinion saying that this is a square deal for something that's otherwise unrecoverable for the city. Nice. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think that's a great program. The only thing is when you do these, we get released or the title transfers when they finish their construction. Correct. <laughs> so that they will build on an encumbered piece of property, potentially encumbered piece of property. Well, so in the case of the church, it's been deeded to them. So it's just the transfer is. Well, it, I mean, it's. I'm just saying, you know, if you're. You're going to do a mortgage on a piece of property like that. That property's got to be released the before they put the mortgage on. The lien will be released um, prior to construction because they can't they can't pull permits or anything until the until the lien is removed. Right. So the development agreement says the lien is removed. You have uh, X number of time years or whatever to develop that site. If you do not, then the city will claw back. So we have a clawback. It's a liquidated damages. Program. Okay. Yeah. So we have the ability to claw that back. That was don't the term. Fulfill their end of the obligation. Correct. Okay. That's all I'm saying. We just as long as it's yeah. No. No. We're transferring it from a real property right. lien into a contractual. Uh, a, uh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Right. I think it's a great program. Yeah. That. We're and we're just my 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 biggest deal is I mean I have people that come in all the time that that want to do this, and then they're just. They just, they don't. So, you know, finding, that's why we have so many people right now that are switching from building something from the ground up to, well, can we rehab these, you know, condemned houses? Right. They're, they're, they kind of switch over. But when the market changes, interest rates go down, their money is flowing a little bit better and stuff like that, then this kind of program is very encouraging to people. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Um, so that kind of brings me to ask you a couple questions. What do you think would assist in, in in actually speeding up the process for you? Because we've kind of mentioned a couple times before, like a possible auction. What do you, because you're the one that's in the field doing this. So you, I can only guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so your opinion is very valuable on helping us kind of figure out how to speed up the the action on the infill and create um, an interest in people coming to obtain these lots from the city. How do we get that out? What do you suggest we do? Right now, I think I think the biggest encumbrance on anybody who's looking at developing a lot is the financial aspect of it. Okay. Um, 
I, and there again, I don't know if there's any sort of program, um, you know, grants that are out there, things like that, that can help people um, accomplish this. Um, I mean, having, again, having an auction, everybody at the auction would have to understand that if you buy that property from the city, you're going to be required to develop it. So I don't know that an auction is going to help us um, in that respect because they'd be like, oh, I just thought I was buying it for side yard, which takes me off another little bunny path. So we do have some of these properties where somebody wants to just buy it for side yard. So I attune it, we use this example of slaughtering a sheep versus shearing it. If we're gonna sell a piece of property that has a lien on it for $10,000, plus the cost of the property is about 2,500 bucks and somebody wants to buy it for side yard, then the opinion is that you, sh you should pay what, what that property is valued at, whatever city investment is, and the market rate for that property because we're going to share that sheet one time. Right. Somebody's going to get it, put it in the side yard, it's going to add $10 to their taxes, they're going to fence it, and nothing is developed. So we're going to ask full market rate plus, you know, negotiate maybe a cost of a lien and get some money back versus if we can get people to develop it, we're going to get all of our money back. So sometimes we get stuck a little bit there on, you know, a lot of people want to buy side yard because everybody's like, I don't want anybody build next to me is the thing, but we need, we need housing. And there are so many of these other little properties around that people can buy for side yard. I don't, I don't think the city should be entertaining that unless it's at a full market value. I don't disagree with you there. Okay. What we're trying to do is I think what, Councilor Arnold was talking about, and we've had some conversation, is how do we get on a proactive infill project? Because we can drive around this community and we can see many vacant lots don't do us any good, don't do the neighborhood. They become dumping zones, they become whatever. They're just not good things for us to have. So I think what you're talking about is exactly where we need to go with removing some of these lots. And we also need to then look and see if again, if there's any federal, and I don't know, you know, whether these infield projects would, and I don't know whether we have urban, you know, federal urban redevelopment money, what things could be out there on the federal level. Community development block grants. Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Something like that, combined with an update to our affordable housing ordinance yeah. and other things. There's a number of different ways to go, but the uh, you don't forget another thought. I said there was two or three things we need to do in the subdivision. <laughs> One of the things as you and I need to dig into, maybe with Lewis's help, is the concept of an administrative plat. <laughs> yeah, an administrative plat allows us to avoid doing the full mapped things. It's eight and a half by eleven. You read somebody's legal description. Okay, add in those little side yards and those other little pieces. They become, or maybe it's a portion of a alley we vacated. Rewrite the legal description and then record it. Now you have taken that property off the books. You've added it to the private property as well, and it costs way significantly less than going through the actual planning process. Yeah, no, these, these, these single lots should not, yeah, if we can avoid the planning process for that. Yeah. that would right now, it's not in our subdivision code, but we need to. Yeah. I mean, we, we could get a variance form, I guess, but yeah. we might as well write it down. Well, I think this is a path that I believe there's some of those counselors mm -hmm. have talked about individually or we've talked about before. I know I've had a little bit of dialogue with you, Councilor Pace, I know that you've had these conversations and, and I think that's a, a, a way that's going to improve our city, that we look at this. And again, some of this is going to rely upon you now, Mr. Mavers, to come back and say, here are some suggestions and here maybe are some avenues of federal funds uh, to help move this forward. The other one I like, Todd, is the fact if we can, instead of tearing down homes, the possibility of rehabbing yep. homes. Yeah. Uh, some of our teardowns definitely do need to be teardowns, but some of them that become teardowns could have been a rehab if they're, again, if there's federal monies available out there or um, 
or is this something that the city needs to look at as possibly funding to create those rehabs to take place? So one of one of the other one of the other ideas um, that's kind of floating around out there is, you know, should should the city? The question is, should the city be in the development process? Should we let's for example take a vacant lot, buy a very nice uh manufactured home put it on the property do the property improvements and then turn around and sell it and develop our own property to to sell and do these do these one one at a time and just start doing these infills on these properties because that's that's an option as well yeah, the, and the only issue that legal points out to that we can do it legally. However, it would all be prevailing wage, so we would, yeah. we'd be selling a significantly yeah. more. I'm not sure the city wants to get into the speculative business of house. Uh, okay, it's a good I mean, idea. I just, right, it's a great idea, but if we can promote that from some other private investment, uh, I think there's maybe ways to waive fees if there could be right. uh, on these infills. Do they have to pay development fee? Yes. I mean, maybe those are things that we can. We can they, figure out how to. Yeah, how to the development fees, plan check improvement, uh, infrastructure fees, things like that. Really, we don't charge a lot. I know, which they need to be readdressed as well. We've had conversation about those needing being brought up and, to current. And I'll be bringing that forward next month. So. Yeah, bring those up to current standard. But but I think there's other things that the city can do to try to help promote <laughs> private investment to 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 move it along uh, without it being a real. Um, taxpayer burden for the rest of the community. Yeah. But I think we need, do need to be creative and think about those those to get them moving ahead. Where we're gonna where we're gonna you know I actually had a conversation with a uh, an old friend of mine who's a developer uh, the other day and he was talking about the trends in development right now which are to smaller, more flexible uh, lifestyles. Uh, getting back almost to the you know, I want to say the houses we all grew up in in yep. the 1960s all the way up to the early 1970s, average home size was about 1,200 square feet yep. nationwide. On back we're trying back down to that situation. When we're looking at eight out of every 10 houses now that are being built are not going to be occupied by families with children. It'll be one, it'll be a singles, it'll be couples, it'll be things like that. The idea of being able to have anywhere between 500 and 1,200 square feet on a small lot, even a condominium type of thing where you have an HOA that takes care of all the landscaping, where people can have a little bit of private open space, but then get up and lock the door and go vacation, go all around. That kind of flexibility is something that's really coming on strong. And if you read all of the, especially the retirement magazines right now, they're all talking about New Mexico being the next great destination in the Sun Belt. It's the only place where you can truly build affordable housing. Yeah. For, especially for retirees. And I think some project like that in this community would go over very well. That's some place where people can lock it up and leave for three months or two months or whatever they want to, feeling it's a secure area and off you go. We we don't have that here. But that's where, that again, that's where my work on the zoning and development code has to come in to see. Right now, we just don't have provisions for those type of developments within our R1, R2, R3 zones. And we have to be a little more flexible. We have to promote yep. uh, these smaller lots, smaller homes, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, anything we can do that will allow people to fill in and add to our, not just our, our uh, market-based for sale housing stock, but also our rental housing stock. So that's where the duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes come in because those can all be financed either FHA or BA. People buy them, they live in one unit, they rent out the other three. Yeah. Um, it's a, and, and that would go great with our infill project. Exactly. And I think that's where we really can make some strides in this community and, and move ourselves ahead. And again, so. that's where uh, we happen to have, if, lot, if Todd happens to have two lots side by side or a lot and a half side by side, we do the administrative plan, we combine the lots, we throw down a triplex or a fourplex, FHA or VHA, VA financing, yep. and now we've added you know, significant, not only have we given someone a place to live, an owner, and got them back in the private hands, but we've added to our available uh, rental stock as well. And I know I was out at, where was I today? The, um, 
the big project on the Sycamore at college. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. the uh, apartments. The apartment, Spring River. Spring River. Spring River. Yeah, Spring, River whatever. Spring River apartments. I was out there today talking and we had a meeting. They're getting very close to being able to open up the next phase yeah. for that project. They have a waiting list. Now, they have, their, their prices have gone up significantly. Their rental fees have gone up uh, significantly. But even they have a waiting list for people to move in. When they open that segment up. Yeah. Well, how soon do they think they're going to open that? I'm sorry? How soon do they think they're going to get that? Uh, I would expect the next uh, two buildings to open up with it before the end of January. Wow. Yeah, we, were, we were out there just talking about they were they were a little bit short on some of their uh, trash enclosures. We had to go out and take a final look at placement of trash enclosures. But they were um, I was specifically asking them, OK, when do you need this done by and when do you and they're uh, they've already got the payment down. They are doing finishing touches on the next two buildings. And then there's, I think, four or five buildings after that. that You'll be you'll be looking at the entire place I believe, being open by summer. Yeah. Well. It's just going to cause me longer to get to work because that's the way I go to work. Every time. <laughs> There's going to be a lot more traffic okay. out there. That's progress. No, I'm not. Just, I'll just go to work later and miss all those people. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, progress. Yeah. yeah. I think you'll survive. You think uh, <laughs> it's okay? I think it's great, Todd. I think that this is something that where you're headed. I think you just keep doing it. Yep. And I, like I said, I, when when somebody comes in, um, there was a, a recent property auction uh, not too long ago, um, and I've had a slew of people come in going, hey, I bought this piece of property, and I didn't know there was a lien on it. What can the city do? And I'm like, I can work with you to make a yeah. payment arrangement with you. And, you know, if they void their payment agreement, um, it will trump, it'll trump the lien on it so if they if if they void that out then we can add that yeah. to our inventory i really don't want to i don't want to add anything else so make your payments be responsible for it and, and everybody that i have on board is doing really good with that so i would just make a suggestion to you that you come before council and it'll be every month whenever you feel like you've got progress to show that what you've accomplished okay so that the community can see all the good work that you're doing. Okay. And I think that that would give the council, give them some comfort of what's transpiring and what progressive okay. method that you're doing here that they should be fully aware of. We'll this is a, I think it would be a great thing to do that. Yes, sir. I commend you on what you're doing. Thank you. So any further questions of Todd talk? Love the name. Trademark. Yeah. Trademark. That would ask Okay. Thank you. There being that, we will go to discussion item B, which is the introduction to home rule. Yes, uh, counselors, for the sake of brevity, given this holiday season and uh, my direct orders from a number of counselors, uh, the counselors were presented with chapter 28 of the Municipal League's Guides for Clerks. It outlines the timeline that has to be followed for home rule. Uh, long story short, we have to adopt a charter. The charter would dictate and the charter would opt into home rule specifically under Article 10 of the state constitution. Uh, there would be a committee, seven people on it at, at least. Uh, no more than four could be any one party. They draft something, the council has to approve it. It would then go to a vote. This all has to happen within one year or the process starts now. Um, and I think it's if this is something that you guys would like to have deeper talks about, if, you know, this, could, this could take a while and discuss this. Please let me know, and I'd be happy to meet with you privately first, and then we can schedule it as as you see fit moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Next item, and I don't know why it's ours, but it may have been infrastructure's problem to handle, but the MERP workshop. Yes, uh, but I'm willing to to schedule it through here. Yeah, it, uh, because Mr. you were the first committee since the council. Yeah, so you got stuck with it. No, that's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because I believe that there uh, is worthy that this gets worked through, and I think that was the orders of council, was it not? I was not at the last meeting, but that were the. I was given direction to figure it out, but. Uh, 
I think that was a direct quote. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I prefer to figure it out along with you guys at the basically, time and place of your convenience. Basically, Mr. Chairman, that um, document is at the city council. It just got passed over, so it's tabled over there. So in my simple way of looking at things, we can't even procedurally talk about it. Really, because it's in the wrong it's in the wrong parking lot. That is that is definitely a argument with substance. <laughs> and if I recall that because I listened to the five hour meeting that you all had, um, that that was a topic of conversation, if I recall, and it was the council's decision that it'll be a council issue. So I don't know how we have heck the council's gonna figure this thing out. To make it work, Councilor Warface, am I correct that it was a and the Councilor Court correct? It was never voted on. It was just that house. But I would say that in order to have a orderly workshop, yes, I would recommend that we do it through the legal committee. Okay. Hey, Mr. Point. Chairman, <laughs> I'm okay with that, but I. I just listened to that discussion. It wasn't clear to me where things were headed that night. Well, don't feel like the load. I didn't know where. We... Oh. <laughs> I just knew that. Well, it was moved to come back to the next council meeting and have discussion. And well, well geez, where do you want to have discussion, and who wants to have it? So I was told, Mr. Chairman. You were told. I was told that uh, I might be a little uncomfortable with the procedures that the City Council of Roswell handles. And I've been doing this a long time and I understand the rules of order and I'm not comfortable with it, but it's it's in the wrong parking lot. I mean, it's 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 not even in the right city block, in my opinion, to work on it. You guys well, doing cool all it is, I guess, is scheduling a <laughs> workshop for the full council, not just the legal committee. Scheduling a workshop for the it's full for council. The full I don't know how I can tell the full council that they got to have to come to a workshop. Excellent question. You don't. I don't have that power. No, you don't. But the, the thing is that just like this meeting, it's open to all councilors. Right. And if they are willing to come, they will come. Okay. I, I guess, Councillor, uh, the structurally speaking, would you like to run? the Merck workshop. Yes, I will run the Merck workshop. In the case, because there may be at some point in time, I will have to recuse myself because of my potential, depending on where it falls, of my potential personal financial gain that could come out of Merck. But I have had discussion with my partners and that we may elect not to participate in Merck, and then I will then be a voting member of the body. Correct. Is the government the Government Ethics Act provides that you cannot take advantage of a program until a year out of the city council for which you had indirect or direct creation. Correct. Right. And and I've made full disclosure about this before, and I'm making it now. But I do not have a signed development agreement with the city. Correct. Correct. Which it, I may not have. You know the the other the other. Uh, way of doing it is, is letting the uh, uh, mayor call the workshop for the entire council yep. and let the mayor chair the, the workshop. Let him chair that. I mean, we can either war. Yeah, no, it, it's really, if, it, if you want to, if you want the reins. Take, I'll take them. I have no problem. But if you'd rather the mayor, some people that don't want me to have the reins. But. Well, let them come tell you about it. They can come tell me about it. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you, Councilor Lopeza, what do you think the proper path? I, I would say let the, let the mayor run the, the, the workshop. Okay. There you go. You let just the mayor decide. Okay. Let the mayor decide. And the reason that I suggested is because somebody has suggested that they go through a committee. And, and I, not to be disrespectful to anybody, but of all, all the committees, I think this would be the one that we share it if and it, it went through a committee. But the the mayor, the previous mayor, you know, did several workshops that he chaired. Okay. And, and I think that that would be the appropriate thing 
to bring in all the counselors. I think we, we address that with the mayor yep. and let it be his to take care of. He gets paid the big bucks. Well, yeah, if you call it that. Um, <laughs> I have a question for our learned legal mind. Um, counselor, have you um, had an opportunity to look at the legal questions surrounding the Merck? Yeah, I've looked at it further, Counselor. I can I can use leading questions, Counselor. Absolutely. Not, I'll be a friendly a witness. <laughs> yeah, the, the short answer right now, I mean, if 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 you're asking me how we can do it, we can only do it for small time development. Uh, counselor, <laughs> how do we uh, small time development would be two houses a year? Less than twenty thousand. Uh, it'd be. Uh, People have to get maxed out at under 20,000 so that we don't have to bid it. The issue I'm having with the procurement office presently is that we don't know how we can run a procurement on somebody else's private property to build what will become ultimately city owned stuff. Uh, I've talked with Mr. Reavers about a couple of funding options on the owner side, but I'm running into some other difficulties there that I haven't worked out yet. And we, I want to talk with him before spilling that one, spilling the beans on that one. Um, this is pre, pre counts, whatever we're going to do. Pre workshop. But what I, what I could say about the program is that so long as the people opting into less than two full reimbursements per year understand that the prevailing wage would apply, we can, and that's the other big issue because it, uh, uh, scale wages. Wage starts at 60,000, correct? Mm, uh, yes, starts at 60,000. So if I was a developer, builder, owner, and I used, I built two, that gives me the 20, assuming the 10,000 stakes. Right. And so if I do that three times, then providing wage attaches. Right, but if, but we don't want to, we don't want to blow over 20,000 because of the procurement code. Right. And okay, then let me let me lead it. I don't even know if this is a leading question. City Attorney and I have been talking about this. The one of the avenues that we're looking at is 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 again the you know how do we hold down that twenty thousand dollar number and not like the procurement cost? But the messaging on the MERP itself has gotten a little confused. Uh, with people thinking that the MERP was designed just for big developers. The MERP was designed for infill primarily. It, it helps big developers, or maybe not nowadays, okay? But we don't lose the program. We, we need to massage it. We need to, to uh, yep. correct some of the errors and yep. language in it. But just earlier tonight, we were talking about the cost of putting in sidewalks. MERP would apply to that right. as well, it does. okay, for our infill development. Uh, Merck would apply to reconstructing uh, curb and gutter if you yes. do a, a, a curb cut for a driveway. It'll also apply for uh, running your utilities if you have to make your uh, cuts out right there. So there's there's all kinds of really good rationale for maintaining the program in some form, right? especially for infill development. And the way we've got it designed now, whether we just got lucky or, or not, again, I was talking about duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. Okay. We max out with our procurement clause at $20,000. Well, that just happens to be a fourplex times $5,000, right. which is what's already in the program. So there's a lot of good reasons to keep this thing moving forward and to, to add into the infill, but we do need to massage it. And, uh, right. Yeah, yeah so my, my current suggestion is to, what um, we need to change the application order to the app, uh, application before plat, and then uh, and concurrent approval of application with platting, if platting is necessary, and then we would cap it at twenty thousand per individual, twenty thousand per. We'll say person, with the understanding that if somebody breaks into ten different companies, but all has the uniquely same owner, we're not going to let that dog walk. It's a continuous. If they can't break it up into five twenty thousand dollars, because it's continuous, as I recall and what I understand, yeah. that they will attach. Right. As you move on down the road, and so you can't you can't get around that. So if yes, I can continue with my question. I don't remember we're late for seeing four. But this is all great conversation. But let's move on. But let let me get back to my questions. Okay. 
So if we adopt it to a 20,000, and, and that's going to go, of course, if it's infill, they've already got a water meter and they've already got a sewer system of some sort it has to be attached. May or may not have a sidewalk, but they got a curb in the street, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let me ask this. How do you propose, let's just say $10,000, we got one project on one lot and council uh, ladies Arnold's and Councilman or Pace's board, and I'm going to go out there, I'm going to build a house. And so I come in and apply for my $10,000. How do we get past the anti donation clause? Now, first off, who, who should be the rightful receiver of the $10,000 gift? That's what it is, the $10,000 gift. So getting to the anti donation clause provision is tricky so it has to be for something that by law they're not responsible to build so what we'd have to a negotiation would have to occur to get something in excess of what they require by law to build so if they fall under the subdiv subdivision code they got to build the streets they got to build the sidewalk they've got to put in the gutters uh, that's going to blow us anyway so right. that's where you fly in right here but so, uh, a, a good example of something that wouldn't necessarily fall under the code is old pipes that are still sufficient but that the city doesn't want to see used that would be a reasonable thing to negotiate over okay. so if it's cast iron and we want to see pv if it has another 10 years we can negotiate the pvc going in because it's better for the system it, it, we, it, it really does have to be case by case depending on the project i think there's other ways councillor that we need to really look at satisfying it may not be the same dollar amount but there may be ways that we can get creative then, the, to mr chairman the constitution does not say oh we can give away one dollar bill it says no. I mean, and, and 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 i've looked at this and i and and i truly have looked at it and tried to be objective i cannot see any legal way to get this done to, to a level like this. Now, we might be able to do it on a lot by lot basis that Todd's working on or something, but I cannot figure out a legal way that you can follow all the procurement laws and rules and get by the anti donation clause because what you're doing is the taxpayers are giving Mr. Smith, Ms. Jones, whomever, builder, developer, homeowner. Ten thousand bucks, and you cannot do that. Okay, so um, that understandable. That that brings up Carlsbad for me because Carlsbad had the affordable housing ordinance. That actually right, yeah, yeah. And so we should qualify. That this is this is if this is pure market rate housing where there's no affordable. Yeah, and that's what Mr. Meaver was talking about. Yes. Yeah. So that should apply if it's affordable housing. Right. Yeah. If it's affordable housing through our ordinance, that we're then we can on then we can do something different. Because no, no, then what we're we can donate all that. the infrastructure for affordable housing. That's not a. The, right. the state constitution very explicitly says that. All infrastructure can be so long as we do it through the property. Yeah. With MFA. MFA. Carlsbad still doing the program? Uh, Carlsbad stopped doing the program in 2019 after MFA said it has to be through affordable housing only. Yep. And to do the affordable housing, there's a lot of state statutes come into play, and you've got to, you've got to do a different set. It doesn't matter what the city of Roswell does, you have to do applications with the state yeah yeah they would go through us and we'd work with mfa to get the applications so, and then there's a monitoring period there's, but there's a couple of other things that i'm looking into right now that i have yet to discuss with us but they comes down especially uh in in some of our older uh more under let's call them our underserved areas being able to uh go ahead and pass a a resolution or other that that these particular areas, because they are underserved, because they are uh, blighted, because they are, they do have other issues at hand. Again, that would lay a an overlay over everything, and that changes the rules as well. And yeah. Many of our areas, many of our areas in the city, uh, while I know no one wants their their uh, neighborhood to be, you know, yeah. So that being blighted, what, what, but what is that, that's yes. the first step into in, to correct the problem. 
Again, it's kind of like with our uh, clean and safe program. You have to declare something dilapidated and uninhabitable before you can take the steps. Okay, so next thing. So in reading the MRA for Clovis, Okay, I highlighted and was specifically drawn to the part where in an MRA, the anti-donation clause does not apply. It's waived. It's waived. So that is actually something to consider as well for the specific areas that require infill and stuff like that. So there is that opportunity. But that's why I would actually like to ask that we save this conversation for when the mayor schedules us a workshop. I'm with you. And I think we're going to come up with some great ideas uh, that will get this because when the MERP was originally put into place, I just don't think there was a lot of thought done to it. That uh, and, and issues popped out after uh, it became more questions were asked, uh, and so if you recall, questions asked. If you, if you recall, Counselor, in October of 21, I was the only individual that said, think about this, City Council. Yep. And it wasn't done. <laughs> in fact, it was passed at a special meeting two weeks later. At the firehouse with me. At, at the, the airport. That's exactly correct. That's how that happened. <laughs> and I will tell you, as long as I sit on this council, I will not participate in a meeting done like that. That was not transparent. <laughs> so that's my editorial comment on it. But if you recall, I was I was the only one. Yep. So okay. that said the city should look at this in a different avenue. So let's move on. Move now on. let's talk about the schedule administrative code workshop. Yes. Oh. That is something that we need to move on because of where we're headed That's work. and what we're handling. That's real work. So, I know. and we've done some preliminary work on this. Mm -hmm. And Just so we need to move this project down the road. Because we, we procrastinated on a good minute Let's now. stop procrastinating. Let's get some work done. Yeah, so let's pick a damn date for a workshop. I don't know what the calendar looks like for people in January. We can forget about the rest of this month. Right. Holidays. Oh, let's make Christmas. Why don't you get a candle? Yeah. I'm up for it. I won't be. <laughs> this is my kind of excitement. Well, I'm kind of excited yes. about this. You know, I was kind of warming up to you, but then just <laughs> changed and then a U turn. <laughs> I, I I'm like that. This administrative. Can we do both at the same workshop? No. I think we're going to turn the other one over. No, yeah. In other words, the mayor's. No. We're going to take this one on here at, at, at legal. legal. Okay. Oh, just legal. Yeah. yeah. Well, but invite all so councilors. Okay. To participate. They can, they can attend anyway. I know. We'll give them all a right. written invite. Well, we we in, in January we invite all the council. I would think that we would uh, describe it as a workshop. It is. Of a regular. It, it will be a total workshop. There will be no decisions made. It will be a total workshop to listen. One item or to just that will be the only item on there. Okay. Just like he likes to do it to me on finance with his special workshops for the budget. So. See, but the, the way to, to handle that is have you and somebody else not show up. <laughs> That's well, I thought about leaving no. the other day. No. <laughs> so does anybody get the calendars out? I got yeah, it. I, I Make some suggestions here. 15, 16th through the 20th that week anytime for me. 16th through the 20th of January. January, yep. 16th is a month. We got city, city mm -hmm. council. 16th is a holiday. 16th is a holiday. Well, we're going to work Christmas a minute ago. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll come in any time. Oh. All right. I um, don't care. The oh, actually, yeah. Okay. So we got finance on the sixth, twelfth of the city council. You want to do it before your next legal meeting, which is the next legal 26th. meeting is January twenty-sixth. Right. So we would want to do it prior to that. So what's the week like that? That's the sixteenth through. I, I won't be here on January the eighteenth. The 18th, you won't be here, so let's not do it. The 17th is public safety. 17th is public safety. Oh, 19th. 
What's the 19th? What day of the week is that? Thursday. Thursday. So Thursday. Does that work for you? Yeah. Will you be back on the 19th? Yep. Yeah. So yeah. you all want to move it up so four we four o'clock? I'm fine with that too. That's yeah. fine. Okay. All right. All right. Are you talking two? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Fine. Eighteen hundred hours. Got it. Two o'clock on the 19th. Anything? Will that work for you? Are we talking about the workshop? Yes. Yeah. I will tell you that Councillor Foster and Councillor uh, uh, Moore Moore probably won't show up. Oh, gee, because of the school. <laughs> they signed up for the, this job. They ran for it. You know, I, I'm okay I, trying to. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying. <laughs> January nineteenth. I will try to accommodate them. Well, I'm in fine. I just don't, I'm tired. I'm tired. Of I just don't like here us summer. continuing on. We're five forty-five right now. Yeah, but not in finance. Finance, we go to seven o'clock regularly. Right. And this is okay. I would so. actually like to make a motion that the city starts providing pizza for those late nights. <laughs> oh, that's. Eat it. I can give it. <laughs> the city wants it. Yeah. <laughs> At what time, sir? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. Either way, this could go on for some period of time. We have some real dialogue to get this. I don't want to feel people like, oh, it's six o'clock. I got to get out of here. Yeah. No, we need to discuss you. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's important. It's important. It's just the I mean, idea. I was, <laughs> No, it does. We need to get the respect for the deserves. So, okay. Next item on the agenda. Do we have any reports? They're in your packet. They're in the packet. Okay. Can I do it like we did at the city? I want to hear what legal things or illegal things the legal department did. Well, I just nothing illegal. Did you? I'm just going to move approval. Not that I depend on the record, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then how about if I just move the reports? Can I just ask a question on the on the legal report? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. On on the uh, the charts that were provided, what kind of incidents? How did, would you describe the incidents reported on? Okay. Just Are you the safety? The safety report. I have Miss Shelley. Yes. Yeah, that's safe. Yeah, that's safe. Oh, I thought it was under legal. No, Shelley. Oh, they're here. <laughs> yep. Uh oh, what incident? No, 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 we shouldn't let these people she been hiding somewhere. Yeah, we shouldn't allow that. If you're not working, yes, I promise. I can find an incident is if the, the employees that. are injured or the city property is damaged. Okay, that's an incident. I will ask a favor. Yes, sir. Can we chop this report in two and blow it up? <laughs> a little difficult to see, it. see those. Yes, sir. We can do that. I know I need you glasses. You need your glasses. <laughs> we, just, we already determined that. <laughs> yeah, we just blow that up a little bit. Oh, no. there, just to follow up, is there money associated with the incident? So anytime that we have an incident where we file insurance okay. against a citizens, if they've had a wreck or something damaged city property, we'll file insurance claim against it. If we get that money back, it depends on what uh, department it goes to, and we make a deposit into that. If um, I can tell you right now, I'm working on insurance claims back from January that uh, Tess and I are, are uh, working with, trying to get funds in. Sometimes the funds turn around real quickly, sometimes they do not. But yes, there are funds that do come in and they are presented back to the damaged department. And if it's if it's the city's fault, if it's the city's fault, usually the file a tort claim. Mm -hmm. Then we take them to court, or we pay. We <laughs> often pay. Our, it's our insurance. Yeah. Attorney to court. It does. It does attack our insurance. 
uh, we do attempt to, to talk to the different departments. And if it's a small fee, if it's less than what our deductible would be, I try to give that back to the department. Um, there are some that have been filed in the past without a different uh, additional information that uh, I've been called on and asked, please don't send these to us. See what we can do at home first. Yeah. Councilor, does that to answer your questions? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing on the employment on? Are we starting to see more applicants show up? We are, but as we are getting more applicants, we're losing more. So we're just kind of leveling out each month, it looks like. I mean, I think some of our admin positions are averaging about 15 to 20 applicants, but our other CDL drivers are not one applicants. You're not getting them? No. Is that a pay issue? I think it's a pay issue, and a lot of them are going, coming to us from the oil field, stay with us for a month, and they go back to oil. They're going back. So they're shifting back and forth. Yeah. Yes. And I reached out to our market study people today to see where we're at and wait for uh kind of let me know where they're at with that market study. So we're waiting on that too. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yes. Don't we have a wage study coming back? That's, that's what she's talking yes. about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. See what that does. Should have done them back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should have already had it. Yeah, yeah I thought it should have been back yes. already, but okay. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, for me, uh, would you mind introducing yourself to the committee? <laughs> I, I think no. I'll, you know everybody, but uh, that I'm the cabinet contract administrator. I took Jessica's place, so um, any contracting question, give me a call. Okay. Uh, so okay. if you want to stop by and see us, we're in that legal department. And I got to say, they're great. They put up with all of my dad jokes. Um, it's a dangerous place up there. That's yeah. why I left. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any other further reports? It says now chair comments. The only comment I have is I want to thank all of you for this time that we have been serving with you. It has been a pleasure and an honor to work with all of you and being that it is that time of season and I hope that every one of us has a happy and joyous and prosperous new year and through this holiday season. And that um, again, I wanna thank you and I feel very good working with all of you. That is just a lot of trust I have. You all feel the same way and let's continue this on and move this city where we need to move it. So, thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas is on top. So, Public participation. There you go. Public participation. No, no, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. You got to ask those people that have been there. You go. Anybody got anything? Hey, thanks, Bruce. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Bruce. Anything else from anyone? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we will let him know that. Thank you all. Meeting adjourned. So it's under two hours.